station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We are ready for the event. How do you hear me? Houston ACR, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you hear me? I've got you loud and clear. How me? Got you loud and clear as well. Please stand by for opening remarks. Welcome to Wright Middle School STEAM and Gifted Magnet NASA Downlink. Wright Middle School is a dynamic and diverse school community in the Los Angeles Unified School District. Wright Middle School is the right place for students who like science, technology, engineering, the arts, and mathematics, or STEAM. We are so excited to engage in a question and answer session with you today. Hi, my name is Khalees Roberts. My question is, do you hear sounds in space? Hello, Clarice, how are you doing? We do hear sounds in space. We are inside of a spaceship that has air in it, and therefore we can hear, we need air to be able to hear it. So uh, when we're in a space suit, we are out in space, but still we have a little bubble of air in our, our, in our helmets. And so yes, I can hear my fan going inside my spacesuit. Any sound my spacesuit generates, I can hear. But in the vacuum of space, outside our spaceship, outside of my spacesuit, can't hear a thing. There's no air, and therefore it's completely silent. Hi, my name is Whitney. My question for you is, what is the most unusual thing you've seen in space? That is hard to answer, the most unusual thing I've seen in space, because we see amazing and delightful things every day, even inside of our space station. But the thing that surprised me the most, I think, was I was looking out the window, and something went flashing right by the space station, it looked like. Turned out it was a shooting star, but it was towards the Earth. It was between the space station and the Earth. I was very surprised to see a shooting star below me, instead of looking up in the sky at night. Hi, my name is Grace and my question is, do you feel any pressure like from your clothes while in zero gravity? Very interesting question. Yes, you can feel your clothes, but you feel it in different places. My shirt right now is kind of uh, rising up and touching my, the bottoms of my arms. And so I can feel clothes on me, but it just feels feels like it's touching me in different places than it would if I were standing on the ground or sitting on the ground. Hi, my name is Keon Weir. My question is, have you found any evidence of plant life in space? Well, you may know that we grow plants here on the space station. We've done that many times before. Um, so outside of the space station on other planets, on other planetary bodies or asteroids, there's been no evidence that NASA or others have found of plant life. Uh, no evidence of life, as least as we know it, there yet. However, the building blocks for life, such as carbon molecules and slightly complex carbon um, uh, atoms and molecules we have found. We found methane on Mars, for instance. We found evidence, potential evidence of having water on another planet before, on Mars, for instance. So that means that the building blocks of life do exist on other planets and other places, and it just remains to be seen if we're going to find life, such as plants or anything more complex than that, elsewhere in our solar system or in the universe. And my question is, how would you describe the sunset and sunrise in space? Well, it's very fast. The sunset and the sunrise is up here. It only takes a few seconds to go by. As you uh, probably know, we experience about 16 sunrises and 16 sunsets every 24-hour period, every day. And it just takes a few seconds to go by. But it's very beautiful because it's a very bright light. The sun uh, just comes straight into our windows and into our eyes. You don't even want to look at it. But then you see a beautiful blue ribbon 
of the atmosphere as the sun starts to rise, and then you can see the Earth start to glow below us with colors and clouds that you've seen from Earth, pink in the clouds and deep blues, and then it looks like morning, and then you have a bright daylight, and then the sunset looks a little bit like it does on Earth, except it's happening below us out the window with uh, beautiful golds and reds, and then suddenly the sun is gone and we're in darkness. Hi. My name is Anthony. My question is, can you bring animals into space? Yes, we can bring animals in space. We've done that before. We've brought uh, mice up here before. We've brought uh, insects. Uh, a number of animals that we've actually studied since we've been here uh, on previous missions as well. And it's uh, very important to understand how all animals live up here, including humans. And so the space station can support that life. And uh, we have everything we need to be able to have uh, animals live up here with us and to be able to study them. And it's kind of nice uh, sometimes when we have those extra crewmates aboard. Hi, my name is Makai Ware. And my question is, are there any other plants that can support life? We don't know if there are other planets that can support life, but we want to find out. And the James Webb Telescope is up there to look for one thing, to look for that, look for signatures and uh, planets that are orbiting other stars. It seems that there is evidence that Mars could have in the past supported life because there is evidence that water used to be on Mars. Given the chance with so many stars and so many planets, I think one of the, these days we're going to find out that, yes, there is evidence for life on another planet. But we'll wait and see. It'll be a very exciting discovery. Hi. My name is Cyan, and my question is, do you stargaze in space? We try to stargaze in space. We're very busy. And to look at the stars on the space station, because it's bright inside with the lights on, we have to go to a window and wait for a while for our eyes to adjust to the darkness. If we have enough time to do that, which might take about five minutes, then we can see some beautiful stars. It's uh, probably see more stars than if you were to go outside of a city into a field somewhere on a cold winter night and look up on the cloudless sky and see uh, millions and millions of stars. It looks a bit like that. The difference is that the stars don't twinkle. So it's a very surprising when you look at them. There's no atmosphere for the starlight to come through. And the planets look like steady red colored dots, which is quite surprising as well. So when we get a chance, we try to stargaze in space. Hi. My name is Kaylin Jaku, and my question is, when did you learn how to play the guitar, and can you play in space? I started playing the guitar when I was 17 years old, once I had gotten to college. Um, and I do have a guitar here with me. I didn't bring it up. There's just one already up here. So I have had a chance to play just a little bit. There's not a lot of time to play guitar, but it's fun when I get a chance to play. Hi, my name is Angela. My question is, what would you consider to be the most challenging adjustment you have to make to travel to space and to stay at the International Space Station? So there are a lot of adjustments to make, not only leaving Earth, but then living in zero G. The hardest part about leaving Earth, probably an adjustment you have to make is saying goodbye to all your friends and family. The hardest part about coming to the space station is you arrive and it's almost like you're starting life all over again. You have to learn how to dress. You have to learn how to eat without getting food all over yourself. You have to learn how to go to the bathroom. You have to learn how to move around. I'm holding myself down with my toes right now and I had to learn how to do that and get adjusted to it. So just doing the day-to-day -day things and on top of that getting a lot of work done as we do in the laboratory up here on the space station. Putting that all together is, is quite challenging and quite an adjustment when we get to the space station. Hi, my name is Cortez. My question is, since 
orbit the Earth 16 times per day, how do you know what time to go to sleep and wake up? Well, you might not be surprised to find out we go to sleep and wake up when the ground and mission controls around the Earth when they tell us to. So uh, we've all decided to set our time at, at Greenwich Mean Time, which is about the time that London is in. And so we just set our clocks to that. And humans are, are pretty adaptable, so we're able to change our, our clock for wake up or going to sleep uh, whenever we need to. So uh, that's what we do. We wake up at uh, Greenwich Mean Time about 6 a.m. The ground tells us to, so our alarms go off then and we get to work. Hi. My name is Tyler, but you can call me Ty. My question is, how do you avoid collisions with moving objects in space? Hi, Ty. There are a lot of really smart people with very powerful radars that are watching almost everything that's orbiting the Earth and tracking them for us. It's called the uh, Space Surveillance Network. So what they're doing is tracking objects, and if they think an object is getting close to the space station, they have a lot of complex mathematical algorithms that say, hey, there's this chance, they put a number to it, there's this amount of chance this object is going to hit the space station. And so we've decided, and, and NASA management and others have decided that if, it, if the risk is getting them to be a little bit too high, we might have to move the space station out of the way. Fortunately, as the object gets closer, we get a better idea uh, if it really is going to hit the space station. And usually we don't have to move to get out of the way, but sometimes we do. But those powerful radars are very essential now in the modern uh, space age for us to be able to stay up here safely in space. Hello, my name is Roy Swordman, and my question is, what is your daily schedule on the space station? Hi, Royce. Uh, every day is busy and every day is different and every five minutes sometimes is different. I've done about 15 totally different things today already. Usually we do what you would do on a day, wake up, brush our teeth, eat breakfast. Uh, we kind of do a little bit of homework, maybe read the news, but then we go to work and we'll be working I think uh, uh, a total of about 14 hours a day. Work includes exercising. We have to spend about two and a half hours a day exercising. Uh, but we have our meals like you do on the ground, and at the end of the day, we have a little bit of time to talk and enjoy each other's company, but we're pretty tired, and so we go to bed at that point. Hi. My name is Sayla, and my question is, are you doing any research on how microbial life develops in space? Hi, Sayla. Yes, as a matter of fact, we do, and we're doing it uh, right now. There's an experiment called Biofilms, which we're trying to understand how these uh, bacterial mats or bacteria that all fit together in a flat plane uh, that can grow on things, uh, especially with water in them on the ground, can happen in space as well. We want to understand how that works because we'd like to protect the hardware and ourselves from this bacteria that grows. So. Uh, it turns out, though, that cells grow differently in space because there's no gravity and there's also radiation hitting them. And that's actually important for understanding how bacteria grow on the ground as well. So we've been discovering a lot of things because of this unique environment, high radiation and uh, unable to feel the effects of gravity. We've been able to learn quite a bit about how bacteria live and grow. Hello. My name is Nadir Williams, and my question is, what projects are you currently working on while aboard the International Space Station? Hi, Nadir. It's kind of hard to choose um, what to tell you about. I just last week was working on this combustion chamber. It's actually a, a big chamber that's protected from us, but and we're protected from it, but that's where we can start fires, small fires to, with a lot of cameras and sensors to totally understand how a fire forms in zero G. And that's pretty important for understanding how fires propagate on the ground as well. And this is the only place we can remove the effects of gravity. I was involved in a skin study trying to figure out how skin ages. It seems like with all the radiation up here that uh, we age maybe and our skin ages probably faster than it does on the ground. So I had skin cells that I was working with and, and giving them food and letting them grow and, and scientists on the ground are going to study those as well. 
I've done a lot of uh, ultrasound experiments up here. And some of my favorite are the capillary flow experiments that we've done in the past to understand how fluid moves with uh, under capillary uh, force control. And that has a wide implications on uh, space engines and even medical devices on Earth. But there's experiments going on all the time. Hi, my name is King Demetrius, and my question for you today is, how do you work out in space with zero gravity? Well, it's really important for us to stay um, in shape, keep our bones and muscles strong, because they would waste away since we don't have, feel the pressure of gravity. We have three main devices, a stationary bike. It looks like a stationary bike, except it doesn't have a seat because there's nothing to sit on. We have a treadmill. It's on the wall, actually, and that treadmill uh, allows us to practice walking and continue to run and stay in shape that way. We have uh, bungees that hold us down tight. Well, one of the best machines is our weightlifting machine, and that one uses vacuum pistons to push against us, kind of like a, if you were trying to open up a clamshell, pushing us to, uh, together from both sides, and we have to hold it up. And we can get up to 600 pounds uh, of pressure on that so we can keep our spine and our legs and our core muscles strong. Hi, my name is Jeffrey, and my question is how you get back to Earth. Hi, Jeffrey. Just to my right here and on the side is a spaceship. It's a SpaceX Dragon capsule. That is how I'm going to get back to Earth. We're going so fast right now with a lot of energy, 17,500 miles an hour. And that spacecraft has an engine in it that will slow us down so Earth's gravity can pick us up and let us fall back down through the atmosphere. And then the atmosphere itself and the friction from that, because we hit it so fast, is going to slow us down the rest of the way until the parachutes can open and we'll land in the ocean. Hi, my name is Jaden, and my question is, how do you maintain your mental health being away from your family? That's a great question. The, um, we have lots of things here that are just wonderful. Uh, I can make a phone call to just about anyone th that I want, if I know their phone number. And so I talk to my wife and my daughter most every day. And I get a chance to have a video conference, much like we're having right now with them once a week. And we have email as well, so we can stay in contact. And that's really important so that even though I'm away, I can keep up with the news at home, the news of the family. And it really helps us to feel uh, more connected to the earth. I've never felt lonely up here because of all these things that we have. I might feel alone, but never lonely. Hi, my name is Jessica. My question is, how do you get accepted into the astronaut program? Well, you can get accepted probably by starting right now at the age that you are, by studying hard, taking care of your body, taking care of yourself, being involved in some sport, uh, and joining clubs, being a part of a group of people, particularly in a leadership role where you have to make decisions, uh, particularly decisions that have consequences. All those things are not easy to do. So it takes years and years and even decades to learn how to do them. When you get of the age and once you've had a, a degree, it's, uh, you have to graduate from college, then you can apply for the astronaut office. It's a government form you fill out. But uh, go ahead and apply. I think NASA would love to hear from you. And there's a several stage pro process after that. They do a physical, make sure you're healthy, and then you might have a chance to join the astronaut office. Thank you, NASA, Dean Jackson, and coordinating teachers for collaborating on this extraordinary and historic event. We are inspired by what we learned today, and we thank you for providing us an experience that we will never forget. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.